Thinking holistically about designing your blended course will help you create a class that flows smoothly between the online and face-to-face -face environments. This demonstration is intended to illustrate how to think holistically as you begin to design your blended course so that the two environments are well integrated with one another, as opposed to feeling like disconnected parts. So, you're ready to design a blended lesson. In this example, it's a lesson designed to teach about the science behind soda fountains. This might be a lesson that you've already done in the past, or a lesson that you will be building for the first time. Regardless, you'll want to identify the objectives that you will be targeting. Then, you can think about which experiences students will need to interact with in order to reach those objectives. This will allow us to break the lesson down into its different components. Every lesson is different, obviously. But for example's sake, let's say that my whole lesson contained a demonstration, reading, discussion, lab activity, and assessment. Once you've established the different components that your lesson will contain, you can start having a conversation with yourself about what exactly you want to accomplish with each one. This will lead you into thinking about which environment, online or face-to-face, -face, will offer the greatest outcome for supporting that goal. So thinking about my demonstration, I'm envisioning that I will start off by having Mentos and Diet Coke on a table and ask my students to predict what will happen. After they had time to make their predictions, we would perform the task to learn the answer. As I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking the face-to-face -face environment will be the richest environment for watching this happen. So, I'm going to plan to do that. But what about my absent students? I don't want them to miss out. And I think it would be good to give my students a resource that they could revisit later. I found a YouTube video that does a pretty good demonstration that is equivalent to what I would do in face-to-face, -face, just without all that great live experience that I was really going for. I think this will serve as a good alternative demonstration for my students should they need it. Next, I want to provide my students with some literature that discusses the science behind the demonstration they just witnessed. I decided that the online environment is the best because it has greater accessibility in terms of when and where my students can interact with it. I can also use hyperlinking to provide more information on key concepts for the students that need it and it will save me from printing up everything on paper, another big concern of mine. For the lab activity, I'm going to have my students attempt to recreate what they witnessed in the demonstration and have them document their findings for use in their discussion that they will be having later on. I think that doing this in the face-to-face -face environment will be best because it requires specific resources that I can provide in class for them. Plus, this experiment is kind of messy and potentially dangerous, so I would want to make sure that the students were in a safe environment with my support. Next, I would like to have my students engage in a reflective discussion about their findings from the lab activity. I'm having a really hard time thinking about where I want that discussion to take place. I think that some students really excel with talking face-to-face, while others would really benefit from the ability to compose a thoughtful response in a discussion form, and this would be possible due to the asynchronous nature of an online discussion format. Ultimately, I think I'm going to go with face-to-face -face because of the ability to adapt the conversation on the fly. I think it makes sense considering that they will move into the discussion on the heels of the lab activity. So they go from a face-to-face -face thing to another face-to-face -face thing, so there's not a rough transition that way. What might be a great idea is to offer an online continuation for when they leave class, should reflections come to mind after they have left my room that day. So maybe I include a discussion forum to continue the conversation. For the assessment, I'm thinking that students will put together some sort of presentation that demonstrates their ability to teach others to make their own soda fountains using Mentos and Diet Coke. In addition, they will illustrate the science behind each step in the process in their presentation. The format could be text, images, animation, video, 
or really any medium that they felt comfortable with communicating these ideas. I would like their final product to be published online so that it's shareable. Other class members will benefit from seeing these productions, and in addition, this just makes it an awesome teaching tool for anyone that has access to it. Thinking about your lesson holistically like this allows all of the components of your lesson to flow smoothly. Because you are thinking about your learning target for each component first, it allows you to pick the environment that best suits it. This way, you're not forcing learning into a format that doesn't support it very well. As you can tell from the conversation that I had with myself, you often get torn between both environments. Both environments offer different affordances after all. You might find yourself using both environments to fully meet all the needs on a given component. This is great and is totally in the spirit of holistic thinking. I hope that this example can provide some insight about how to think holistically as you begin to develop your own blended lesson.